to. And he said, I want to be like this man. I want to be like this woman. And then a little pressure comes upon them. A little persecution comes their way. And then they give up. They say, I thought everybody will support my dream. I thought everybody will support my plan and my goal and my ambition. Everybody is against it. They give up. I will not give up. I said I will not give up. The persecution will come. In fact, even for your Christian life, the persecution will come. But if you will just stay with the Lord, you'll be all right. You'll stay with the Lord, won't you? And that's the secret of that man, Joseph, number three now. Partnership with God. Partnership with God. He remained with God. Persecution came, you'll find Joseph there. Misunderstanding came, you'll find Joseph. They, they held him. They put him in the pit. You'll find Joseph still with the Lord. And they brought him out of the pit and they sold him to the Ishmaelites and Joseph was still saying, Lord, I don't know why this is happening. I cannot explain this, but I still belong to you. And then they sold him to Egypt in Potiphar's house and he said, Lord, I'm still going to serve you if you will not give up. In spite of the persecution, in spite of the problem and the pressure, and you just say, all I know, partnership with God. I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I've decided to be like Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Friends may oppose me, enemies may crush my life, no turning back, no turning back. And it, whatever happens, I put the kingdom before me and the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. If you will take that decision and say, I'm going to remain with the Lord, whatever comes and whatever goes, that place of success, we're getting there together. What's number one now? Number one, again, the promise of God. Number two, persecution for godliness. Number three, partnership with God. Number four, purity by grace. Purity by grace. You know, the Lord began to now give some favor to this Joseph in Potiphar's house. And the wife of Potiphar, daddy was not at home. Mom, uh, master, the master was not at home. And this lady, this woman, had been looking at Joseph, this young man, innocent young man, and handsome young man. Looks like I'd like to have some relationship with this young man. And then the lady began to say, Joseph, have you ever known a lady like me? And Joseph said, I don't talk that kind of thing. Those who are destined to the throne, they don't speak that like kind of language. Wouldn't you like to... My master is not at home and daddy is not at home. Will you like to do something and have private pleasure? And he says, no, those of us who are destined to the top, we don't do things like that. Because if you are destined to the top, there is a kind of language, those successful people that they talk. There's a kind of life, those people that are destined to the top, there's a kind of life they live. Although I'm not there yet, I live like I'm there. I act like I'm there. I think like I'm there. And people like us who are looking for that success, we don't do that kind of thing. You remain pure. You remain pure. You know, that's what takes us to the top. Are you following the, you know, the news, what's coming on the news of all these people that want to be president now in the United States of America? And they are going to have the election in November of this year. Many, many people entered the race. But you know what happened? They began to check up their records when they were younger. Before this desire to become a president, before it came, the checks they issued out, the people they went out with, and the things they did behind their wives, and the media people began to report these things, and those reports knocked a lot of them out. And they couldn't contest, they couldn't move on anymore. You see, if you're going to the top, you want to have the grace of God in your life. There are some things you don't do. Some places you don't go, and some things you don't say, and there's some crowd you don't move with because you are destined to the top. Number four, purity by grace. And then eventually the woman was so unhappy that one day the, there was nobody around. 
And she just grabbed Joseph and said, today, today, whether you like it or not, you've been telling me that you as a person, you don't do this kind of thing. Day to day, you will do something. And uh, what did Joseph do, if you know the story? Left his coat. Better lose your coat than lose your dream. Better lose your coat than lose the success. Better lose the coat than lose any other sin, than lose the sin that the Lord has destined you for. We're going to the top. I said we're going to the top. And, you know, I don't want anything to spoil my chance of getting to the place the Lord wants me to get to. That's the reason why when the challenge comes to you, and when the persecution, the temptation, the trial comes to you, you, you don't think about the temporary pleasure you are going to get in that temptation. Think about your goal, your destination. Think about the place you are going. And therefore, and then the woman cried out and turned the whole thing around. I said, see this young man. He wanted to come and mess me up. And when I shouted, then he ran out. But you know, he didn't defend himself. He just kept quiet. And the master didn't ask him any question. And he threw him into the prison. He got into the prison. I'm looking at Joseph now because I just want to be like him. I'm looking at Joseph now. How is this young man going to react? He just, you know, lived his life. And then in the prison there, he then was promoted. And that was the place he learned administration. You know, all the places you go in life. Why am I in the prison? There is something to learn. Open your ears and open your eyes. You'll learn something before you come out. I said you'll learn something before you come out. And he saw those two people that were dream that had a dream. And they were sad. And they couldn't interpret their dream. And he said, why are you sad? Oh, they said, because we're the dream. And nobody could interpret it for us. Oh, you say interpretation belongs to God. Tell me your dream. I'll tell you. I'm a dreamer myself. And then a dreamer comes to people who have dreamt. This is a good connection. And then he interpreted the dream for them. Point number five now, perseverance in goodness. Perseverance in goodness. When you are tired, do some good. When you are persecuted, keep on doing some good. When people are putting some pressures upon you, keep on doing some good. You see, there are some people, they just give up. In this life, it is not, it's of no use to do good to anybody. That's what they think because of what they're going through. But you know, what Chief Joseph did not interpret dreams for them. The man that came out of the prison and told Pharaoh, when Pharaoh had his own dream, how will this man be able to recommend Joseph? In your situation, when you are down, when they knock you down, when they insult you, when they abuse you, when you are suffering for righteousness, keep on doing good. It is that that will take you to the top and you will get there. What's number five? Perseverance in goodness. And then number six now, pursuit of his goal. The pursuit of his goal. You know, whether it was in the father's house, or with the Ishmaelites, or in Potiphar's house, or in the prison, anywhere he found himself, they pursued one thing I want to do. One thing I aim at. That's Paul the Apostle. This one thing I do. If you're a man of many, many things and many activities, and there's no central thing in your heart that moves you on, that kicks you up, that makes you to say, I'm alive today, and this is the reason I'm alive. If you're not like that, you never achieve anything, jack of all trades, and uh, master of none. Narrow it down, and pursue just that thing. Have a goal, and that goal is what you pursue for the rest of your life. And then, eventually, I'm sure you know his story, and eventually they brought him to... Um, they brought him to Pharaoh. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And then he came. He became the prime minister in Egypt. And then his brothers, they came. They, didn't know, they couldn't recognize him anymore. But he recognized them because they had not changed. You know, people who, have, who don't have any goals, to so see them seven years after, they have not changed. People who don't have any dream, they don't have any destination. If you see them 17 years after, they still remain the same as you saw them 17 years ago. They have not changed. But in the case of uh, Joseph, he had changed so much. 
they couldn't recognize him. They couldn't recognize, even understand his language. And uh, eventually, they came and they bowed down. And then Joseph saw that the dream had been fulfilled. Your dream will be fulfilled. If you don't give up, if you don't give up, if you keep on just following after, like, uh, like Joseph, you will not give up that success. You will have it in Jesus' name. Then they came to him. They said, Joseph, we remember what we did. We're very sorry about it. They thought he was going to punish him. He said, no, don't worry about that. God sent me here before you. Point number seven, praise to God. Praise to God. When you have got the success, when you have achieved that thing you are looking for, and now by the grace of God you are there, praise to God. In the case of Joseph, that's how God moved him from the point of the promise and then he moved him to the top. I'm coming now. What's uh, the second person we're talking about? Joshua. Thank you very much. Now this is Joshua. Everybody say Joshua. Thank you very much. As we look at Joshua, now it will take us a long time, but I'm going to, I'm going to cut it short. Moses was the leader of the children of Israel. And Joshua was just a minister unto Moses. And then God told Moses, he said, I'm calling you home. But Lord, the work is not finished. The Canaanites are not all conquered. And then the place we need to possess, we have not possessed everything yet. And he said, yes, hand everything over to Joshua. Me, Joshua, what can I do? I will do it with you. God will do it with you. I said, God will do it with you. Remember, it must be that you are in the hand of the Lord, and the Lord is taking you to where he needs to take you. As I look at Joshua, in fact, Joshua chapter 1, we're looking at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 7. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Verse 6, back up to verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Look at verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Look at verse 9. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. See over and over. I was, as was being told, just courage is what you need. Be strong and of a good courage. Look at verse 18. The latter part of verse 18. Only be strong and of a good courage. Am I learning something tonight? What I'm learning is if I'm going to climb every mountain, if I'm going to cross every ocean, if I'm going to bring down the Jericho walls before me, if I'm going to defeat all the Canaanites that will stop my way unto success, there must be number one thing. What is that number one thing? Courage. Courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Now, when we talk about courage, what is courage? Some people say courage is fearlessness. Mm, not really. You know, courageous people, you may have the fear, but then you don't give attention to that fear. You just act as if the fear is not there. You overlook the fear. And then in spite of the fear... In spite of the way you feel, the butterflies inside you that are kind of saying, do you, who do you think you are? Do you think you can take on those people? You overlook all that and then you are still courageous and you keep ahead and you do it. And people don't know how you feel if you don't tell them. If you don't say, I'm feeling afraid, I'm feeling weak, I'm feeling insignificant, I'm feeling like a nobody. If you don't tell us, nobody will know. If you just you know, stand up and square your shoulders. And then, even though you are fearful within, you look at the people face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and you say, God said, I'm going there, and I'm going to get there. I'm telling you, everybody will clear out of the way for you. Point number one for Joshua is courage. Number two, Joshua. I love that Joshua. At that time, there was no, uh, there was no school for, of science, but Joshua said, how can you take the land without any investigation? 
How can you take the land without even finding out? If you want to become a doctor, find out. You want to be a successful doctor, you're going to find out. What does it take? What subjects will I have to learn? You will do some investigation. Get some information. Information is very important in this age of information data and so he said we're going to find out what kind of cities they are in what kind of things they do point number two companionship you need other people around you surround yourself with people that agree with your vision with your dream with your goal with what you want to become and it is that companionship with the people that matter association affiliation or the people that matter that will get you there and you will get there number one is courage number two is companionship surround yourself not with people be running you there every time who do you think you are you can't do that you can't make it even those of us who have been here for all these many years what could we have done if you listen to people like that they will sap your energy and they'll discourage you. And then you'll say, they say they cannot do it. They say I cannot. They say we cannot do it. And then you give up. I will never give up. I said I will never give up. And then, number three, communion. Communion. And when you look at it and look at chapter five, eventually, it is no time to read that tonight. You'll find commun communion with God. And then they got into covenant relationship with God in their communion. And if you will always be in communion with the Lord, oh Lord, what shall we do? He saw that uh, at the end of chapter five. He saw that man, are you for us or are you against us? And then he said, I'm the captain of the army of the whole of the Lord and then he bench down before him the communion with the Lord it will carry you somewhere I said it will carry you somewhere and then just after that have you heard the story of the Jericho walls before did you hear that before the Jericho walls was standing firm and it was standing between them and the place they ought to go and then uh, Joshua got the instruction from the Lord what shall we do and the Lord said you're not going to do anything just move around once a day that's enough and then second they move around how easy it is when God is working with you to have success and if you link up with the Lord tonight you're going to have that success and then on the seventh day they went around how many times 